When we mention Gojo Satoru, we are talking about the strongest character in the anime, who changed the balance of power with his birth and afterward. He placed Jujutsu users at a higher rank than curses until the Shibuya incident, causing a complete upheaval, destruction, and the death of sorcerers as a result of imprisoning the strongest sorcerer in this era. The ceiling could have been avoided either in Shibuya or even before, on multiple occasions. However, Gojo, whether lazy, arrogant, or overconfident in himself, always acted to completely resolve matters. A simple example was his fight against Jogo in the first season. He was the hero with absolute power, but always failed in the most significant encounters. He possessed everything, and at the same time couldn't do anything, and he didn't avoid the most important mistakes in his life as a sorcerer. These mistakes he committed accumulated, resulting in his sealing in Shibuya and the death of many of his comrades. The second result will be mentioned at the end of this video, which discusses the most important mistakes that Gojo Satoru made throughout the story, along with justifications. Let's start with the first mistake, which is underestimating Toji and not taking the fight seriously. If Gojo had been more cautious, read, and understood the movements, style, weapons, and the opponent's plan more, he might have won against Toji even without reverse cursed energy and awakening before that, and victory in the end, or at least delaying Toji and thus saving Riko from Toji's hands. What we can justify for Gojo is that he was not at full strength, not experienced enough, and also Toji had a pre-planned strategy to defeat him. And finally, the inverted Spear of Heaven, which rendered Infinity useless. What happened after the deaths of Toji and Riko was a very significant and impactful event in the world of Jujutsu Kaisen. The chain of fate connecting the Six Eyes user with the Plasma Star Vessel had broken once and for all. The second mistake Gojo made was destroying the inverted Spear instead of hiding it. If the Spear had been present, the task of unsealing Gojo Satoru would have become very easy afterward. We cannot justify anything for Gojo here other than that he rushed this matter. As for the third mistake that Gojo made, it was emotional and related to his relationship with Ghetto. When Ghetto turned into an evil character, slaughtered his family, then an entire village, and aimed to genocide entire humanity of Japan, even establishing a tribe for this purpose, Gojo did not prevent him, imprison him, or kill him. He merely talked to him and left him for many years to kill numerous humans. He didn't intervene or kill Geto until the latter launched the major attack on Tokyo, followed by an attempt to kill Yuta. However, this attempt failed not because of Gojo, but due to Rika defending Yuta. When Gojo arrived, he decided to kill his friend because the threat he posed became too significant. This led to Geto's death at the hands of his only friend. Furthermore, Gojo once again prioritized his human emotions over the greater good. Instead of ending his friend's body and burning it entirely, he buried it out of respect. The relationship between the two allowed Kenny to reach the body on the same day, heal it, and take his curse technique. Gojo remained unaware of this situation for over a year. As a justification for Gojo, he didn't know the danger of not burning a sorcerer dead body, or there is a sorcerer that was watching Ghetto from afar, possessing a technique to switch bodies and would take Ghetto's body within a day. Moving forward a year after the first year students, Yuji and Nobara appeared. A battle between Toto, Yuji, and Hanami occurred. Before activating her domain, Gojo appeared and nuked Hanami with purple, but the latter managed to escape. While Gojo could have reached Hanami, activated his domain, and crushed him completely, killing him outright, there is no justification for Gojo's actions here. Before this, Jogo faced Satoru in an entirely open battle. Instead of quickly killing him, one of the most significant current threats, Gojo played around with it, explaining his abilities to Yuji. At that moment, he should have killed him directly, either by domain and using the purple, or tearing it apart entirely so it would die thus disrupting Shibuya's plan, or delaying it for another time. There is no justification for not killing Jogo other than being cocky. Afterwards, we have the Shibuya incident. In this incident, Gojo did not detail the majority as opposed to the minority as countries do in wars by killing all humans close to curses with a devastating domain. Instead, 
he chose to expand the domain for a quarter of a second, resulting in his sealing by fake Gato. This is also connected to his previous mistake of not finishing his dead friend's body and allowing evil to control his body and power, resulting in Gojo's imprisonment and the success of the villain's plan. Here, Gojo Satoru's justification is that he is not a killer, especially of humans he is supposed to protect as a sorcerer. Therefore, his decision was somewhat correct, but not logical, and under understandable circumstances, it should have happened differently. As for the manga, his first mistake was not killing Yuji, which resulted in Sukuna later emerging from him multiple times, once in Shibuya, causing havoc and killing hundreds. Afterward, in the culling game, Sukuna took over Megumi's body, succeeded in obtaining his cursed technique, the Ten Shadow, and collected all fingers except one. Finally, in the battle against Gojo Satoru, the Six-Eyed User died against the King of Curses. This mistake is considered significant, and the justification for it is Yuji's survival and Sukuna's complete elimination, along with the collection of all his fingers. However, Gojo could have imprisoned Yuji and not made him free. The next mistake is not killing the higher-ups early on. They were traitors, plotting against Gojo behind his back multiple times. With Yuji sentenced to death and Yuta appointed as the executioner, they went against Gojo's plan of keeping Yuji alive until Sukuna's fingers were swallowed. Not killing them could have led to Yuji's death. After his release, Gojo ordered Yuta and Ino to kill them all, leading to a massacre that wiped out all members of the higher-ups. Regarding Yaga's killer, he didn't die because he simply followed orders. The last mistake, crucial for the anime's ending, is Gojo not killing Kenny after his unseal by his students. Gojo faced the thief of his friend's body directly, but due to Sukuna, he couldn't kill Kenny. However, at that time, Sukuna only possessed 15 fingers, and Kenny was not considered a significant threat to Gojo. If the fight had taken place then, Gojo would have defeated Sukuna definitively, with 75% of his full power. Also, all students would have been sufficient to defeat Kenny and Urami and end the matter. However, what prevented Gojo was two things. Megumi and his reluctance to kill him and his lack of knowledge about Sukuna's strength. That is, the number of fingers he had. Therefore, he decided to postpone the major battle, inquire with others, and prepare. However, he ultimately lost, leaving everyone as prey for the King of Curses, who began killing them one by one.